Our next speaker has been serving as the CEO of Reliance Entertainment since 2009, which is the movie production, distribution, home entertainment, and animation arm of the Reliance Group based out of Mumbai. Mr. Sanjeev Lamba has more than 25 years of experience in the entertainment and advertising industry. With Ogilvy and Mather Advertising in India, with Walt Disney in Asia and the USA, and the Weinstein Company in New York, holding senior international positions across movies, video games, consumer products, and advertising for global brands. In his current role, he is responsible for managing the development of movies in various languages, as well as the distribution, marketing, and sales worldwide. During the past 20 years, Mr. Sanjeev Lamba has been based in Mumbai, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Los Angeles, and New York with global responsibilities and has helped in building successful international um, and for entertainment franchises. Mr. Lamba is also a wonderful dad to two daughters, Nikita and Alia. And speaking personally, I can honestly say that he is one of the liveliest characters I have ever met. So without further ado, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Sanjeev Lamba. Good morning, and uh, thank you for coming out early in the morning to listen to Bitu and me. Um, I have two really tough acts to follow. Uh, so as far as Bitu's presentation was concerned, uh, this is wildlife of a completely different kind. And uh, I'll try and speak really fast. Um, I got a call from Kanika about a couple of weeks ago, and she said, um, you know, we're having this session in school, TEDx, and I really want you to come by and speak about your life. And I said, why would you want to speak? me to speak about my life and she said you know because you're doing what you want to do and you do movies and that's going to be really really interesting and I want everybody to be able to hear about your experiences and so on. Uh, now in the interest of disclosure Kanika's parents are really good friends of mine and uh, I'm really scared of Kanika. I usually do whatever she tells me to do so um, much against my um, uh, natural inclinations. I said, all right, I'll turn up and I'll talk about this. Um, doing what you want to do, not what people tell you to do, not what people expect you to do, not what you think might be the right thing to do, doing what you want to do. There are very, very few people in this world who really get to do what they really want to do, even if it is for a very brief instant in time. Um, I'm one of the lucky ones. I think I'm doing what I want to do. Um, and I just thought that it would be fun for me to share some of the stories about how I got here in the first place. Most people would say that I have a happy life. I work in a company. Um, I think I have a happy life. I work in a company that makes movies. Uh, what's wrong with that? I get to hang out with stars. Um, I know the names of a lot of stars uh, personally on a handshake basis, and some of them know my name. That's, that's a great thing. Um, I'm doing something that I wanted to do ever since I was a teenager. Along the way, I have lived in some of the greatest cities in the world. I've lived in Mumbai, I've lived in Hong Kong, I've lived in Tokyo, Los Angeles, New York, all wonderful, wonderful cities. I've had the opportunity to travel to over 35 countries. I've been at Disneyland when um, the Pirates of the Caribbean premiere happened and a 900 square a foot carpet was laid down and Disneyland was closed for the day. I've even been to the Cannes Film Festival. That's me on the red carpet. Doing my best imitation of Agent Smith from Matrix. I have two beautiful teenage daughters who while they think I'm mildly embarrassing, Dad, you know, behave yourself when my friends come home, they actually tell me to turn down the music. I play music really loud at home. Uh, but they don't think that I'm a total loser because I actually know more about movies than they do. So that's a good thing. And I have this beautiful wife who has accompanied me 
willingly and lovingly in all these travels across the world while I have madly chased my dream. Yet, it took me 20 years of work and traveling to four countries, through four countries, before I actually got associated with my first movie. And that's what's a little different about my story. It did not come easily. Even though I knew when I was a teenager what I wanted to do, it didn't come instantly. Things didn't come magically. I had to chase it. I had to pursue it. I had to pursue it in terms of work. I had to pursue it geographically. I had to move my family all across the world in order to put myself in a position where I would get to do what I wanted to do. Where did this thing about wanting to do movies start? That's the dream that I'm going to talk about. I was about three years old when I was, when, you know, there's a Bengali festival called the Durga Puja that a lot of you might be familiar with. And at the Durga Puja, the local temple, they have a lot of performances. And I uh, am not a Bengali myself, but I lived in a Bengali neighborhood. And I was about three years old when I made my first debut on stage. And my older brother was in front of me, and we were supposed to be two guys walking through a forest, and I was the young guy walking behind, and I had long hair, and all I had to do was periodically jump up and down and say, Bujongo. And every time I jumped up and down and I said, Bujongo, everybody laughed, and I said, whoa, this is good. So I said, Bujongo, a lot. The next year, I sort of stretched myself a little bit, and I went into a singing performance. That's me, third from left, playing a little person. We were supposed to be dwarves on a table. Uh, this was kindergarten, so a long, long time ago, and all these are black and whites. I played helpful people, helping old ladies across the stage. I played servants. I played the village idiot. That came very naturally to me. I played gangland bosses with Stetsons, doing my best Bollywood gangland impersonation. I even played Mary Magdalene. Now, I know it doesn't look like much, but that's me playing Mary Magdalene in a wig, and that's a friend of mine writhing as Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ Superstar, because I look pretty horrible, and thank God I never had to play female again. I graduated to college into lead roles, and I actually, that was the first time I actually had a girl on stage with me. I went to an all-boys school, and all of us had to dress up as females in school, and now I had women playing opposite me. The stage was a place where I really started enjoying myself. I loved the act of creation, and nothing has changed. I'm sorry, these, these photographs are not coming across really. That, I'm third from left. I'm playing the Indian, what else, yeah, in, in the village people. And... Uh, that's us as KISS. And when I say us, I'm the one on the left. Second from left is actually my wife. And she did the makeup and all the clothes, so it's catching. You know, my stupidity is catching. She, she, she also got into this. Um, all of this started giving me a feel that I wanted to do something creative with my life. I wanted to do something that was associated with something that was creative and because I enjoyed it, I enjoyed telling stories, I enjoyed being up on stage, I enjoyed making people laugh, I enjoyed the claps, I wanted to do something like this that would make me happy through my life. And a dream started uh, taking shape. Parallelly, while I'm up on stage, the first movie that I ever saw was this one. I don't know how many of you ever remember this. A lot of you weren't even alive. I was four years old. It was called Tarzan Comes to Delhi. And it was in Hindi. This was Tarzan. He was in Delhi. My city. Not only that, he sang. He sang songs with Jane. And everybody wore skirts. It was great. It was the best thing that I'd ever seen. Right? So, I loved the idea that the movies could transport me into any part of the world. You could make me laugh, you could make me cry. The scale of the movies was much bigger than that tiny stage, which was a physical place. 
and I started dreaming. By the time I was a teenager, I was pretty sure that this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this. But you have to remember that usually dreams get shot down because of convention. We don't do these things. Or society doesn't do these things. Or authority. Your parents will tell you that's a stupid thing to do. Now, I came from a nice middle class family, and to stand up at 17 or 18 and say, I want to go to the movies, I would have got two tight slaps from my dad, and he would have said, forget this. No, he never slapped me, I'm sorry. Um, he was a nice guy. <laughs> so so he, he, it was never a discussion. This was airy fairy. You had to go and get yourself a nice education, so I got myself a degree in economics, and I got myself a... Um, an MBA, you know, I, I did everything that, uh, um, that uh, good boys were supposed to do. There's a great line from John Lennon in one of his songs which says that life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. And a lot of us spend time dreaming about certain things, I wish this and I want to do that, and life goes by. When I came out of the workforce, I was pretty, uh, when I came out of uh, my MBA, um, I was pretty clear about a couple of things. I wanted to do something creative with my life. I, wa I enjoyed business, and I never wanted to wear a tie at work. It was just one of those things. I don't want to wear a tie and go to work. I, I, I still wear jeans. I'm actually, I, I, wear, I, I wear them black, not blue, because they pass off as a little bit more formal than blue jeans, but I wear jeans to work every day and have for the last 20 years. So I wanted to find something that would satisfy all this, and I landed up in advertising. Why advertising, you ask? Because at that time, um, government, uh, all television was government-owned, all radio was government-owned, and the film industry in India was a family business. It wasn't some, a place where you could go and work as a professional. Either you started your own business, or you didn't work in it at all. And as for becoming an actor, uh, well, I thought I was spectacularly good looking, but a lot of other people didn't. And the kind of skills needed to be a lead actor, to cry, to dance, to romance, to sing, to sing while crying, to fight while dancing, uh, I, I thought was a little bit beyond me. Uh, as, as most of you have seen Indian films will, test, uh, you know, will probably recognize. So um, I went to advertising and, um, and I forgot about my dream for a little while because I had a really, really good time. Uh, I went out of the country for the first time. Success came. This is the founder of my agency, David Ogilvy, uh, who is an extraordinarily well-known person in, uh, in uh, advertising history. And that's a very young and very smiley me. Uh, very happy to meet David. I got to know him. I went to New York. I went to all over Asia, and life took over. And 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 life proceeded. And you know, you sometimes put your dream in a little box, and you you come by, you look at it, you say, "Yeah, still there. Maybe one day." Um, we moved. Success happened, and then Disney came. Disney came and picked me up from India just a stroke, and I landed up at the Walt Disney Company in Hong Kong, not the movie division, the, the consumer products division. And seven years later, I was in Tokyo, I was married, I had two kids, I had a good life, I was about to turn 40, and I was no closer to my dream than I ever intended. And I met this, young gent uh, I met this gentleman who was about 82 years old at that time, and he owned a chain of restaurants in Tokyo, about 20 odd, and he was very successful. And I got talking to him about his life, and he told me that by the time he was, he was 62 years old, he was a pilot. He had, he, had, he had been with the Indian Air Force, he had flown private airplanes, and he had retired in Tokyo through uh, circumstances, and he opened his first restaurant when he was 62. He was 82 at the time, and he was one of the biggest restaurant owners in Tokyo. And what he told me at that point was, he said, I've learned one thing in my life, never too late. It is never too late to chase your dreams and take chances. It doesn't matter whether it happens now or tomorrow. You've got to keep your eye on it, and you've got to keep pursuing it. And if you keep pursuing it long enough, it will happen. 
So it took me a year to convince Disney to move me to the United States. They wouldn't move me to the movies. I went to the video games division. The video games division was the first place that I actually came in touch with, uh, with the movies for the first time because Disney was making games based on videos, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, Nightmare Before Christmas, a great game called Kingdom Hearts, some of the kiddie games like Toy Story and Finding Nemo and so on and so forth. And that's where I first started. I came within two inches of my dream. I was working with the studio but not quite out there. So when the Weinsteins who used to, had started a company called Miram. I, my heart jumped at the chance. Everybody around me told me, don't do it. Don't do it. This is, this is, this is, it's too late. You're going to, you're, you're getting into a profession where you have to start young. Don't do this. But I'm really, really glad that I did. That I had the courage to be able to do so. I was over 40, 42 or 43 at that time. A long time later, in the last seven or eight years, I worked on more than 50 films. This was my first one. Wolf Creek from Australia. It's a horror film. Um, you always remember the first one. Scary Movie 4, 1408. It was on television last night, if some of you weren't watching the IPL. Halloween, Rob Zombie's Halloween. Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez working together in Grindhouse. I have a lot of stories to tell about that. Recently, The Help, Real Steel, War Horse. These are some of the Hollywood films that I've had the good fortune to be associated with in some capacity or the other. And here are some of the Indian ones. Pa, Three Idiots, Kites, Singham. Bodyguard, Salman Khan, and my last movie was Don 2, which came out in January. Uh, all told, a wonderful, wonderful time. So what have I learned through all this? About the movies as in life, here are some of the things that I've learned about movie making, and some of the things that I have learned about how creative things happen. Movie making is one of the most collaborative things in the world. You know, it takes an army to make a movie, but if there is not one vision, one clear vision of the director, all collaboration goes to waste. Uh, it's pretty much like having a teenage daughter. Democracy in discussion, dictatorship in action. There is a point at which it all has to stop. I'm sorry, this is going a little fast for me. No second chances. One and a half years you work on a movie. Hundreds of people work on a movie. And it comes out on a Friday, and by Friday evening you know you're gone. Everybody hated it. And there is no way that you can come back on a Saturday morning and say, I want to repair this, I can do this. There is no second chance. This is a brutal profession. Only one chance. And a year and a half's report card comes due on one day. I'm sorry, why is this moving on? Number three, failure is certain. Everybody fails. The best people are the ones who fail only seven times out of ten. Right? So, if you want to be a part of a creative profession like this, you have to be able to embrace failure because it's going to happen no matter what. I don't care how good you are. It's how, it's how much enthusiasm that you bring to your next project that defines how great you're going to be. Number four, failure is public. You know, your dad works in a bank, your dad works selling chocolates and things like that. He's had a bad day at work. You don't know anything about it. Oh my God, your dad has just released a stinker of a movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me tell you my experience. My grandmother will pick up the phone and say, what is wrong with you and why did you waste my time with that stupid thing? You walk into parties and people froth at the mouth saying, why have you done this? As if it's a deeply personal thing. It's extraordinarily public and you have to be able to deal with it. And if you do 10 to 15 movies a year like I do, then it's 10 to 15 really bad or really good weekends. 
Passion is a must. That's the only thing that takes you through the failure. This is not a profession that asks for whatever. Or it's cool. No. You've got to be really, really passionate about what you do because that's what takes you out of your failure. Relationships count. It's only the people that you work with that count because everybody fails. And because everybody fails, it's only the people who think that you are good who will come by and give you the next chance after you fail. So be nice to people on your way up because they're the ones who are going to carry you when you eventually fall down. Show business, not show show. Art is, as equal, is equal to commerce in this business. A writer needs a publisher. Uh, a, a musician needs a gig. A, an artist needs a gallery. In the same way, in any art right now, if you want to pursue it, understand the business of it, if you really want to be successful at it, because there's no art which is just creative alone. The last lesson that I would leave for you is it's never, never too late. I dreamt about things when I was 16. I got to do it first time when I was 43. And I'm really, really happy that I took those chances. I'm 51 now. And the last eight years have been some of the most wonderful years of my life because I've actually been doing what I've always dreamt of doing. And I'll leave you with a quote and it goes back to the previous speaker who was up on the screen. For well you know that it's a fool who plays it cool by making his world a little colder. This is from Hey Jude by the Beatles. It's a line that I've always loved. It's inscribed on chain. Be passionate, care a lot. This, and if you really want to make a, pers a life about the arts, don't be cool about it. Thank you very much.